Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for tonight, your guidance and your work in our lives. Father, I pray as we begin this, this next session that you would guide and direct. I pray that I would not have forgotten anything and anything that was forgotten would be brought to mind. I pray that as we study uh, these, these, uh, these new tools that you've given to us, that they would uh, be a benefit to our our interpretation process. We would use these for your glory and honor. Father God, I just pray for the students right now that you'd strengthen them as we're about maybe halfway through the semester, encourage them, help them to, to turn in their assignments to work hard. I pray that we'd be faithful. And Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would bind the hand of Satan, that the schemes that he has against us, Father, may you uh, uh, prevent him. May, may every uh, act and every plan of his be frustrated. And we just pray for your word to be proclaimed, your gospel to be preached, for your will to be done here in Region 8. So, Father God, we commit this time to you and to the glorification of your Son. It's in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things. Amen. Okay, so it's so good to be with you. And uh, we're halfway, almost halfway through the semester. And everyone's tired, right? There's problems and this and that. And so I just really want to encourage everyone that every semester, every semester we come through halfway, you're so tired. It's just like running a race. And I just really want to encourage you that, that the Lord will bring us through this to the end. We have to run the race that we've been called to run. And I really hope that we're learning. We're learning some things that we can apply. And... So I just really want to encourage you that it's difficult, but we can do it in Christ and just one day at a time, one assignment at a time, one day, all of us are, are maxed right now. I know I'm maxed. So uh, yes, I just want to really encourage you that if you feel bad or if you're, you're struggling, that that's okay. Uh, it's so that we'll trust all the more in our Lord and Savior. Okay, let's go ahead and just work through this PowerPoint. Just, just a brief overview, and then we're going to get into what we'll be we're studying tonight. And so I'm getting a problem here. So we are into session number eight, structure analysis part one, intra-sentence, intra-sentence structure analysis. And so we're, later I'll bring out the big method that we have and, and show you the relationship where we're at and, and where we're, we're, we're going to actually sit on structure analysis for several weeks. And I hope it will become clear to you throughout through the coming weeks. And so interest sentence, we'll get into that. So maybe that sounds like a big word. It's, it shouldn't be a big word once you see what it is, once you see the handout that we have tonight for you. And so just a brief overview, we will discuss the handout that I, I, I posted on EVST hermeneutics page. And I also, I also, emailed it to many of you. So I hope you either received the email or, ah, Danny. So I know that it, I was successful because Danny printed it out. Great. So we're going to discuss the handout and then we're going to start practicing it. And this, this method is one of the, the tools. In, in addition, we have Step Bible. We have Theology on the Web with the commentaries. We have Step Bible for the, for the word studies. And so this is the next tool that you have. This is the next this is the next tool that we have to answer those questions that you made. So there's a lot of questions as far as some of the words, what, how does this word function in this sentence or in this verse? And so this, this handout that, this handout here that I've also printed out is really, is really going to help us to really look at these relationships. And, and, and the benefit here is, we're going to spend several weeks on structure analysis, but if you can get structure analysis down, this is really how you're going to lay out the, your outline and ultimately your, your homiletical outlines. Earlier in the year in, in our Hebrew study before last year, we had a, a study in, in the book of Ephesians and, and the question asked to me, and I didn't really have an answer because they said, Tim, how do I prepare an outline? I know several people asked me, they were, they were stressed, and I was saying that it's really a process. I just can't give you, you know, and so I, I, I didn't really have an answer. Not that I did, I, I, couldn't, I just, I couldn't answer the question for you that night. And so 
This is the solution. <laughs> this is part of the solution. And so what we'll actually have here is this is structure analysis in intra -sen uh, sentence structure structure. So that's within the sentence. And then after we discuss this next week, we're going to look at different genres and their structure. So this is within the sentence. So every sentence, you can use this for, for every sentence that you approach, whether it's in, in, in Hebrew poetry, whether it's in narrative, whether it's in law, whether it's in New Testament, you can use this. This is the first part of the structure analysis. And then the next three weeks, we're going to be unpacking the difference between epistolary structure analysis, uh, a poetic structure analysis, and then like a narrative or story analysis. Now there's other genres, there's pro pro prophetic, but really prophetic and parabolic or parables and gospel, they're combining several different genres. So they, they have poetry in there, they also have discourse, they'll have some visionary. So, um, so looking at first within the sentence and then between sentences, that's really going to be your bread and butter for understanding the passage of scripture, answering the questions that you have, and then also formulating whether it's a small group outline, whether it's a sermon outline, whether it's a teaching outline. And so, you know, I don't want you to be stressed. Maybe you printed it out and there was like 20 pages and you're like, oh my goodness, it's so much information. Don't be stressed, okay? Don't be stressed. It's at least getting us in a direction. No one's going to be perfect. I remember taking my first hermeneutics class in 2009. 2009 was my first hermeneutics class. That was 11 years ago. It's going on 12 years, okay? It's been a process for myself thinking through these things and struggling and then so, and I'm still thinking through the process. So what I'm trying to help us to see here is don't be stressed. Think of this as a journey and just trying, just trying is what I'm looking for right now. I'm not expecting perfection. I'm not expecting for you to get everything. I just, I want us to just to begin to look and to think. And, and the more we practice, the more you practice on your own, the better you'll become. Okay. So we will first, uh, uh, we'll first discuss the handout and then we'll, we'll, we'll apply some of those things that we've learned in Romans 1, 16 and 17 tonight, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and if you printed out your structure analysis intra sentence, please go ahead and open that. Right. So structure analysis intra sentence analysis. So this is another tool that we have. Uh, we'll, once we talk through this, Actually, let, let me just, let me, let me take a step back here. Let's first look at the concise method. So if you can imagine here, right now we're in the concise method. And right now, <laughs> so we've already done steps one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we worked through at least those eight steps. Again, I want to say that this is not everything. You don't have to do this every time for every sermon or every, uh, every lesson, but, but these, but these are the types I'm, I'm providing with you a structure on the order that you would practice them. And then I'm also providing for you how you would do it. So this is really a comprehensive, it's not fully comprehensive. There's actually some other steps <laughs> that I left out one or two, but this is, more fundamental steps, okay? But I want you to see the whole range that, that really there's just so much depth that you can go into. So we talked, we looked at genre, we looked at background, we looked at passage location or context, really number four is context, a context study. We're gonna change that from passage location to context study. We looked at questions, we looked at observations, we looked at word studies. Now we're on the structure analysis, okay? And within structure analysis, we're going to be looking at Tonight is going to be intra-sentence, what inside the sentence. And then the next three weeks we'll be looking at, um, after we've looked at within the sentence, now we're looking at relationships between the sentence. So you could say inter-sentence. Inter-sentence is between two, intra is within. Okay, and so within structure analysis, we can look within the sentence and then relationships between sentences. Okay, and so the three major ones that we'll look at are epistolary, poetic, and then narrative, because really those are the three biggest 
genres and you're, we're going to have really a different approach for analyzing them. And you can't apply the same approach to each one of them. You, you, you'll, uh, you'll be wrong. <laughs> Not wrong, but you'll probably, it won't make sense to you and maybe you'll be off a little bit. Okay. So, so it'll make sense. Just don't be stressed. It's going to be fine. Okay. So tonight we're working on number nine, structure analysis, analysis. And the encouraging thing I want to say to you is that if you've done your work here, really, to be honest with you, explain it and apply it. You're really just, you're just writing stuff down. By the time you get to explain it and apply it, it's not as much any, any more research. You're just going to be writing and, and planning your thing out. Now, if you, if you haven't done a good job here, the steps down here will be much more Mahira, okay? It's gonna be harder, okay? But if you've done your work here, explaining it and applying it really becomes easy. It becomes so easy. For me, when I would prepare sermons, I would spend all my time, even like, I would translate. If I had the time, I would translate the passage. Once I translate, I answer all my questions. By the time I'm down to listing the theological truths, explaining it, it's just, I'm just writing it. I'm not doing any more research. I already, I already have the understanding in, in my mind. And so really, the more that you can invest up here, down here should not be difficult. It should not be difficult to tell God. So I think that should be a word of encouragement to, to all of us. And especially here, like with the big idea, uh, it's just going to jump out. You're just going to know what it is. It's, it's going to become more and more clear. If you haven't done that work at the beginning, coming up with the big idea, your introduction, conclusion, it becomes much more challenging because you're trying to, you're trying to build your house without a foundation. And then you're getting cracks and then things are falling off the house. And it's just so pongit. It's so ugly, right? So the important thing is this foundation. Okay, so let's let's go back now to the intra sentence structure. Okay. I don't want you to be stressed. I'm just gonna talk through here. Just if you have a question, you can just interrupt me. I just want to take our time and go slow. Okay. So what I first the nice thing here, if you, if you saw, if you saw the, the PDF that I sent out, these are quick links. They're quick links, okay? So because once you become familiar with these different categories, you're not gonna be just scrolling down each, trying to find. You'll use this as, okay, here are all my different options. So, so you know, in the past, I've asked questions like, what type of, what type, what type of verb is this, okay? Well, now you know. When I ask the question, what type of verb, you have the different options I, I'm looking for. So when I say what type of verb, I'm not looking for a time. I'm not looking at it past, present, or future. I'm just looking at the, you have my list <laughs> right here. So, so in, in many ways, having this side-by-side uh, -side as we discuss in the future in other courses, you, you have the, the options of what I'm looking for, okay? And so... Um, but the nice thing about this, this table of contents, it's, it's a quick link. So watch. <coughs> I'm thinking that, let's say I look at a sentence and I'm thinking, oh, I think it's going to be a command. Instead of scrolling down, trying to find it, I can just click on it and it automatically goes to, uh, to this. Do you see that? It just, it just popped right down to it. Let's go back and try something else, okay? Let's say I'm looking at, I'm looking at this alternative option. See, it, go, it automatically goes down to alternative. So it's a quick link, okay? So when you're looking at options and you're unsure, you don't have to scroll looking all the time. This is really going to save you time, okay? You're just clicking and it's going. I'm gonna go to request. It goes right to request. Okay, so so the handout it's designed. It's this is like the cloud resource tool. Okay, I want it to be easy for you to search if you have the PDF. Of course, you can always just have it as a handout here. So this is something else I'll share with you. Now in the U.S. for in my like for example my school they didn't really our teachers had handouts like this, but 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 we also had a big grammar book. Uh, syntax book and so I would literally keep the syntax book right um, I'll give an example here. I keep it right so when I'm preparing I keep my my Greek book at with me at all times because it ha it'll have all the categories okay 
So this is, this is to be like a mathematics book if you're doing math. It's, to, it's meant to be a resource for you to keep it at all times when you're preparing your sermon. You can keep a physical copy or if you have the PDF, it's just a quick link. Okay, so that's the, the design for this. All right, let's go ahead now. Let's let's talk through here. And so, and so the, the first overview is really just to give you all the different categories, all the different options. Okay, now it, you you do need to go to the content. You need to become very familiar with what they are. And then once you are, it's just a quick link, so it's it's easy to to, to navigate. All right, so let's go ahead to. Let's go ahead to the first. This is a big picture, okay? Big picture that I have for you to think pictorially what we're doing. I want you to be thinking about what we are doing here, okay? I'm giving you the big picture, all right? Uh, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Martin Luther said, theology is grammar applied. Theology is grammar applied. A and so, that is just a, fo a, fundam a foundational statement for us to think about. Now, of course, you can tease it out. You can qualify. You can add some things fair enough. But at the end of the day, if we're not actually looking at what the text actually says in the grammar, in the syntax, in the semantics, we're just, we're not following, we're not paying attention to what the Word of God is actually saying. It's, we're actually doing our own theology. So, it's because God has spoken and he has spoken through his word, grammar is incredibly foundational. Now, this, this handout is it's using grammatical principles, but you don't have to know grammar, okay? This, you don't have to know English grammar. You don't have to know uh, Tagalog grammar or Greek grammar. It would be better if you did, but the way I've structured this, it, to, it's for us to think through things logically, it's 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 a it's uh, you don't have to you don't have to to have a grammar book to, to identify these relationships. I don't know if that's making sense. When we speak, we speak without maybe necessarily knowing grammar, right? We just speak; it's natural for us, right? And then, of course, we can study language and and we can further. You know, of course, we'll be, we, we can improve our, our speaking, our writing through the study of grammar, but we don't have to, to speak or to write. That, in one sense, is a God-given gift for us, correct? Um, and so in the same way here, uh, I, although we're using grammatical principles, I've kind of, so, so coming back here, you don't have to know grammar. These relationships are, are going to be logical. So, so if you have... If, if you have ability to, to think, and, and I'm a firm believer that all of us have this ability, um, uh, we can work through the text without knowing all the grammar, provided, provided we understand the categories and relationships and the different types of words, okay? So in that sense, you don't have to know grammar, all right? Now, if someone was completely uneducated, you know grammar, it would, be, it would be much more difficult for them. But most of these identifications can be identified through logic. And I think you'll see that, you'll see it as we work through here, okay? So we have this big picture here. And so what, I'm, what I've done here is I've showed you pictorially what a sentence is and then all the parts within a sentence, okay? So let's just look at this one. Let's just look at this one, this one sentence here. Fundamentally, a sentence in all language will have an actor or a subject, it will have a verb, and it will have an object, okay? Those are the three parts, uh, fundamental parts, that every sentence of every language, <laughs> in every context, we have to have, okay? So, sometimes it's going to be more difficult, sometimes... You, you, you do need to know grammar to figure these out, but for the most part, if you, if you have a working knowledge in English, in Tagalog, whatever language, you can identify the, the, the verb, the object, and the actor or subject, okay? We can all do that, all right? So that's, that's the most that, that I'm asking of you, okay? 
Now, those are the three fundamental parts, okay? Below those three fundamental parts are then other words, okay? There are words that uh, modify the actor or the subject. There are words that modify the object, okay? We would call those, ad grammatically speaking, adjectives. I'm not worried about, about the word adjective tonight. Uh, if, if modifying is a difficult word for you, I think actually later in the handout, I was inconsistent because I changed the word to, des to describing. I have words that are describing the actor or the subject. I have words that are describing the object. Okay, so if you want to change modifying to describing, that might be more helpful for you, or you can just pencil it in. The next edit for this handout, I'll change it to describing. Um, but you have words that, that describe the actor, the subject, and also the object. You also have words that describe the verb. We would call these adverbs, okay? Now you could have a single word, you could have a phrase, which are several words, or you could have a clause. But fundamentally, these are the parts that, that, that form our sentences, okay? In Tagalog, it's gonna be more words. In, in English, it's going to be clauses and phrases, okay? But I'm not defining them for you because we don't really have to, I'm not really, I'm not gonna be asking you to define what a phrase is, what a clause is. I will be look, asking you to look for groups of words, groups of words that describe. But again, logically, you can identify what, how these words are functioning just by logic. And I, and I think it'll make sense as we work through here, okay? So that's, that's a sentence, okay? And then what we have here is we have, if you're looking at between two sentences, we have a connecting word. So we would call these, a, we, we could call it a conjunction if you're, again, speaking grammatically, but, but I'm not focused on that. Uh, everyone can identify a connecting word between two sentences, okay? So, so that, is pretty much, that is pretty much it. Now, you can have a connecting word that connects within the sentence as well. Conjunctions both connect within the parts of a sentence and between sentences, okay? So I don't want you to be stressed out because some of you are probably good at grammar. I know that probably some of you maybe even teach grammar. And so if you want to use more a grammatical approach, if you can see that relationships, maybe the relationships behind this handout, please do, okay? This is not a, a technical handout. This is a, a basic handout for us to have something to, to, to make these relationships so that we can, we can imperfectly the, understand the text better and then form our, our, our structure. Um, again, going back to an engineering analogy, you can use, you can use precision, uh, you can use precision measuring equipment and you can just use a tape measure and, 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 uh, and, uh, uh, what is it called? The, the leveling pipe, the plastic pipe, and you can do a phenomenal job, right? You know, the, the, the building's going to look just, maybe it'll look a tad bit nicer if you're using the high precision instruments, but the building will still look beautiful nonetheless. You'll still do an excellent job using more, uh, less precise instruments. So what I want to say is that if, if you know English grammar, if you know Tagalog grammar, if you know Greek grammar, that is better. I, I, this is not to replace, okay? It's not to say, oh, we have this, you don't have to continue on. But it is, so that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that this, this is a more basic tool that will still help us getting at structure, answering the questions that we have, and formulating our, our outlines. So I, I, I hope that I hope that that's making sense for you. Let me just take a pause. Any questions or comments? Uh, excuse me, Dean. Go ahead. You mentioned this is interactive. Uh, from the PDF you sent, you mean it's clickable? Yeah, you can you can only on that overview section. So here you can click up here in the overview, not not further down, but in the overview you should be able to click. So here, you can click there, or you can also click, you can click on the category, or you can also click on the, uh, on the number, too. I haven't tried that. I'll try it. It's okay. It's okay. So, 
Uh, later, later. It's fine, uh, later. So the clicking is really on the category or, or the number as well, okay? Yeah. You have it's, faster, it's faster to open the pages. <laughs> no, I know. I know. So that's, so here, this is why I did it. Some of okay. you will prefer the physical paper, use the physical paper. Some of you will prefer the PDF. And so I want, it, it, it's, it's whatever works better for you, okay? For me, yeah. I actually prefer the paper, but, but, you know, the direction is technology. So we either embrace it or we get left behind. So, okay. All right, so now let's go into what I wanna do is I wanna work through these categories now to, to, to define them for you. Maybe you have a question. I want, I want to bring some clarity to them. So let's just go through here. We're just gonna look at these different categories. I want you to see, and, and we wanna talk through them, and then we'll, we'll do the example in, in, in our text. And so the goal then will be for you to practice this on your text, okay? So a uh, verb, what, what is a verb? Okay, so I am using a grammatical category here. I thought about just using action word, but there are other words that aren't action that are underneath this category. So in this situation, in this instance, we're using the grammatical term verb. But again, this is a non-technical handout. It's not meant to replace grammar. And so I'm just, again, giving that caveat so that uh, if there is some inconsistency because it's not a one-to-one -one correlation, uh, we should choose grammar if there's an inconsistency, okay? So by definition, it's a word that describes an action which could be physical or mental, a state of being, or connecting a description to a subject. So this is the comprehensive picture of what a verb is. It can describe an action that could be physical or mental. So it could be a physical action or a mental action. Knowing something, learning something is a mental action. It's not physical, but there is an action involved, okay? Um, uh, maybe that's counterintuitive, maybe you disagree with that, fair enough, but, but there is some type of, of act that's going on, whether, whether mentally thinking, thinking we're, 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 we're engaged in some type of activity, okay? I think only meditation in the new age sense is where your thinking is actually you're not engaged, you're just emptying your mind. <laughs> so that would be, that would be something different, okay? And then, but, but, so that's one type of, of, of activities for the verb. But the verb can also describe a state of being, right? So it can also describe a state of being. Um, and then not only can it describe a state of being, so you could say, I am tired, right? That's a state of being. I am hungry. That's describing a state of being. I am in the house. That's giving the state of being of location, okay? So the am is the verb, and it's, and it's, 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 it's giving to us the state of existence or state of being. When I say being, that's existence, okay? And so you have, you have actions, physical or mental, you have state of being, and then you also can just connect a description to the subject. So it's not a state of being. So it could be li just linking. You're just linking it to the subject. You're gonna see an example later. So I am Tim. Maybe you'll say that's a state of being, fair enough. Or you can just say this is, I'm just giving you my name, right? So, so there's, there's the, the dog, the dog is the color blue. That's just giving a description. Uh, or maybe a, a better example is the pen is blue, okay? Um, maybe people will talk about that being state of being, fair enough. But there is some descriptions where it's just, it's just an adjective. There's no... There's no uh, state of being, there's no action, it's just linking. It's linking an adjective with a subject. Okay, so that's the range of verb. Okay, so that, that's a big range, all right? Within this range, then, there's different types of verbs. So I'm just gonna go through them, and we have the specific examples here in the Word of God, so you can see how this is applied, okay? So the first type is this idea of action. This is the most, this is the most, uh, basic form of verb, maybe being is, people would say being is, fair enough, but action. So it's just describing an action. So it could be, again, mental or physical. And so we have a category here that when you're, when you're marking up your text, you know, you could use different, you could use, you could use different um, nomenclature. I'm just choosing, the, I, cho I chose the color red, and then I double highlight it. Uh, double underline it. So if you ever are in my class and I always double underline something in red, 
with even if I don't write out anything else, I'm signifying to me that that is a verb, okay? So whenever you see me double under, double underline in red, that's a verb, okay? And then above it, so above it here, if you can see here um, in, the, in this example, you would, you would give the type, you'd give the type. So the category down here, that's the, the double red underline. And then I'm giving you the specific type of verb above. And that's, that's to help us out. So in my class, I will always maintain this. So if I, if, if I have a typo, you can say, Tim, you, you, you typoed it. So, because you know now my, 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 my nomenclature, okay? So a definition, the definition of action is, this is the process of, of co accomplishing something, typically the, the, the accomplishment of a task or aim. So it could be anything. That could be physical, that could be mental, it could be anything, all right? And so the specific example that we have here in Galatians 3.13 is Christ redeemed us from the curse. Christ redeemed us from the curse. So it's an action, right? Uh, identifying other parts here, you can see here that this, this is the, the actor and this is the object. Okay, but we're focusing right now on this, the action. It's an, it's an action. So it would be incorrect for us to call it a promise. It would be incorrect for us to call it a state of being. It is an act. This is very important because in different places, we as preachers, we as teachers need to identify these, these, uh, these words. In the salvation process, the actor <laughs> and the object become very significant. They become very significant, right? So, so people who are trying to say that you can save yourselves, you can save yourselves through your works. This is where it becomes very fundamental to know these parts, these things, okay? Any questions or comments, or this, this is making sense for you? Any questions or comments you want to add, have? So the, as we work through here, what I want to say is that throughout EVST, in every class, at, at, the, at the lower level, okay, once we get into a higher level, if you're in Greek, uh, we will try to keep these same, these same categories, okay? They, we will always, this will be a unified uh, standard, okay? So every class, later on, we have other teachers. We're looking at having another teacher next semester teach for us. Whenever we're unpacking the text, this is going to be a unified standard, and so Practice it when you're preparing your sermon. Practice it, okay? And um, if there is, if you had a recommendation for a slight modification later, not now, later, after many times, maybe we can make a modification. But I, I've been practicing for this since 2009. And so I've actually, this is not my original. There are some things that are unique to me, um, others I've just taken, but, I, but I'm following also what the teachers gave me. So this is actually a standard practice, even in the US as well. So, so this is not something that I've just come up with it's 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 typical and there are some unique things to what i've added but but for the most part it's it's more uh, unified okay let's go on to the second so we have types of verbs number one action so those are important we need to know what is being what we're called to do and what other people have done for us or, or what the action is very very important the next type of 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 a verb is a command so i'm giving you different types of verbs Command, very important, right? You want to know if you're given a command or if we're given a command, we better know what those commands are, are and we need to share those with our audience. It's very important that we give those commands, we relay them to our audience. So a command is, the definition is, it's an imperatival verb telling someone to do something. In most cases, the one who is giving the command is in a position of authority. Okay, so, so in, in a command context, it's not optional. Okay, it's not optional. And the person in the command position that's giving the command is in a place of authority. Okay, so it could be a king. It could be a prophet. It could be an apostle. It could be Jesus Christ himself. Okay, so these are people in, in places of authority. Okay, so the, 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 the classic example, classic example here. 
Go and make disciples of all nations. <laughs> Not difficult, right? Not difficult, but important for us to, to highlight. So it is a command. If we don't go and make disciples of all nations, the church, we as the church, as the body of Christ, both all of us, right now in this, in this class, we have multiple representatives, multiple churches. We as the church, we as individual churches, have this command to be involved in making disciples of all nations. So here's the thing, you are both recipients to this command and the command is given to you as well. So I'm going to get a little preachy. I'm going to get a little preachy here. I'm going to get a little aggressive. Um, uh, um, you know, I was talking, and I'll, I'll, I'll point some fingers at myself. So I was talking about our plan to have EBST with another missionary and, um, I'll mention his name, Glenn Benfield. Henry knows Glenn Benfield. And so we were talking about the curriculum. I talked with many people about the curriculum. And so I went through the list in the curriculum. And, and then he said, that's really good, Tim. That's, the, you know, I, I like that, everything. He's like, there's one class that you haven't really included. And I said, oh, you know, what's that? And he said, missions. And I said, I said oh, well, we're thinking about maybe making it elected later. He's like, yeah. He's like, he's like, yes, but that needs to be, that's fundamental. He said that. He said, you know, his experience has been that, uh, that both the Philippine church is a recipient, but they're also called to make disciples of all nations. And that was kind of a re rebuke to me, and maybe it's a rebuke to all of us. You know, I, I felt rebuked. I apologize. I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, yeah, I just, we get in this mindset of, oh, I'm a missionary here, and, and you're recipients. And so we don't think that, no, as, as a church, as TBC, as Lord's Harvest, we're also called to make disciples of all nations. And so, of, of course, uh, I know TBC has missionaries. I think Lord's Harvest has missionaries. They have church plants as well, so I'm not attacking anyway. I'm just saying, like, we, we do kind of lose that mentality of, of <laughs> we are both recipients and called to go, okay? And so, um, very important, pra practical uh in addition to what we're, 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 we're being taught here. Okay, uh, next category that we have is, is this idea of knowing. Here, this is not an action. I shouldn't say that. It, 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 it's, it's not a physical action, but, it, but it, um, I, let me take a step back. It's not an action because there's no, there's no um, it's not an action because there, even in the mental state, you're not thinking. It's just something that you know. You either know it or you don't. Okay, so it can't be an action. Is everyone tracking with me there? So, for example, uh, let's look at the example here. I'll do the definition first. This is a verb that describes personal knowledge of someone, experiential knowledge, or a particular fact of information. So it could be to know someone intimately. It could be experiential knowledge. Or it could just be a fact. So you could have an experience in which you gain knowledge. It could be just a fact that you know. Uh, I could say, I know that the earth is round. It's just, it's just knowledge that I have in my brain. There's no action. There's no command. It's this, it's this other unique type of, of verb, okay? And so the specific, specific example here is 2 Corinthians 8, 8 verse 9. Verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. So Paul is going to use this as the basis for something he's going to call to action. But in this, this, this specific sentence, he's reminding them of something that they know. And so... I know that some of your passages have these knowing statements. I, I'm thinking right now, Henry Kwa's passage, I think James 1, 3 has a knowing statement, right? Um, and so this is a different kind of, of verb that you need to identify. Uh, next here, so that now we have a link. Now we have a linking uh, category. And so this is, this is a verb that connects a word or phrase to the subject in some way without an action. This is most commonly used for describing a noun. And so here, the famous example, John, John 15, 1, I am the true vine, right? This is not describing a state of being of Christ. It's, 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 it's describing him in a, uh, you could say, metaphor, metaphorically speaking. 
uh, it's, it's a, or an analogy, trying to describe a truth, a, a, a theological truth about him in, in, a, in, a, in an illustrative way. So in the same way that vines have branches, they have fruit, and you have to have the vine that's connected to the root. And so Jesus is, uh, he is the true vine, okay? So there's no state of being. It's just uh, a, 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 descri a description of Jesus, okay? So there's many examples like that, and so we need to identify those type of verbs. Uh, next we have is a prohibition. So a prohibition is simply a negative command. So it's an imperatival verb telling someone to refrain, refrain from an action. Psalm 95, 6. Do not harden your hearts as at Maribah. Do not harden your hearts. And so I remember someone saying to me one time, you know, people are always talking about all the things you can't do in Christianity, but I, I don't think that's true. I think Christianity is about the positives, not the negatives. I focus on the positives. And my answer is, it's positives and negatives. <laughs> so we focus on both. We, there are things not to do. Don't have sex outside of marriage. And there are things to do. Be holy for I am holy. Okay, so, so both are true. So anyone who says, anyone who focuses on one, there's an imbalance there. We want to be balanced. We want to focus on prohibitions and, and uh, commands. Okay, so uh, uh, prohibitions are actually very fundamental as well. Uh, the Ten Commandments, there's a lot of prohibitions in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> More prohibitions than positive. Uh, any questions or comments? Or is this making sense what we're, we're talking through here? Any questions or comments? You, you know, I, I don't, I, I, it shouldn't be rocket science. I mean, this is just basic work. To, and you would say, oh, I know that, Tim. If I looked at that, yeah, I would say it's a prohibition. So we're just putting categories of what we already know. and we're helping ourselves to identify these things so that we can then teach them to others. Because although we know them, maybe people don't. And we're really trying to be concise, we're trying to be precise, we're trying to be accurate, and really highlight those, those, those truths. Uh, next we have here is a state. So just, I'm gonna move along maybe a little bit quicker. And so the definition is, is describes the state of being of a person, place, or thing. So in the beginning was the word is describing the state of being of the word, okay? And that's very fundamental. Um, oftentimes state of being is fundamental. The most fundamental is, is the I am. So Exodus 4 in who is the Lord? The Lord is the I am. So uh, very fundamental, massive debate here, but, but state of being is very important. Uh, next, we have here a statement. So there are a lot of statements throughout Scripture. And so even you could say that this is an action. To speak is an action. Fair enough. So in this situation here, you could, you could highlight um, uh, the example here, Matthew 3.17 is, And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. You could identify said as an action or a statement. Both are true. I have chosen statement versus action because it is a specific kind of action. And um, yeah, so you could, you could leave it as action. It wouldn't be wrong. But I think that what kind of action, we're getting into a, a, a more specific type of action. And so in some contexts, it is important. And so this is just the, the verb that describes the action of speech. Okay. Uh, next we have here is a request. So we have a command, we have a prohibition. Now we have a request. A request is a polite or humble entreaty to someone who is in authority or someone who is socially superior to do something. So uh, uh, God be merciful to be a sinner, okay? You're asking, you're, you're asking someone uh, in, a, in a position of, of authority but you're, you're asking them in a very polite or respect way, all right? And you can really tell the, the person's state of being if they're not asking but demanding, <laughs> right? So the Jews knew that Jesus was the Messiah, but they determined to take him by force. He left, right, John 6? <laughs> so, so he's the Messiah, but they're going to use and abuse him. And it was so, Jesus like, no, you will not use or abuse the Messiah. It's, 
Uh, the same thing with the rich man in, in the parable, Diba. He's telling Abraham, go tell Lazarus to, to, to dip his, t- his, his finger in the water to give it to me. He's not, there's no entreaty or request. It's a, it's a command. He's, he's operating in this idea that he is the king of the world and everyone will bow to him. So, but a request is, is a unique type of action that we need to be aware of. And so that's it. Those are the main, those are the main types of, of verbs. There, there could be others. Perhaps I'll add, this is not a comprehensive list, but it is a, a, a fundamental list. Okay. So, so perhaps you've thought about a word. Oh, this is a, a, another unique type of word. Uh, one thing I just realized I don't have here is desire. So I'm already thinking when I was copying from one to another, you could also add the idea of desire. So there is, you know, I want to go to the store. That, that's a, another unique kind of, of verb. Uh, actually, we should include desire. I'm going to write a note there. So there are other categories that maybe I don't have included here. You can include them. We can add to this, okay? But this is just helpful for us in thinking through how we answer the questions that we had uh, created in the, in the previous uh, parts. Any questions or comments? Is this making sense so far? Question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, when you make examples like this, verbs, is there a possibility? Are you, are you telling us that there's a possibility that this verb may be interpreted in a different way? So the categories here are pretty much non-negotiable. So especially in Greek, there is specific imperative, imperative, uh, um, uh, what's it? I had a brain freeze. There's, a, there's a, a form. There's a special imperative form. So you cannot negotiate. It, it's, it's a unique, just like in English, um, it's a unique, it's a unique form. You can't, it's not negotiable, okay? The, the debate between like an action, is it a physical, is it a, a metaphorical, is it non-literal? You can have debates there, but, but these for the most part are not debated because they're, they have those precise type of um, forms, yeah. Uh, we have similar words in law. That's why there are legal terms that should be interpreted only in the legal sense. You cannot use that in the ordinary sense like uh, the word period, period. There is a legal sense of the word period. But if you use that period in the normal sense, it's a different meaning. It has a different meaning. Yeah. See? That's, so why, that's, that's what I'm asking, that's why. Yeah, no, that's, it, yeah. that's good, that's good. That this is non-negotiable, I understand. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Um, you would have to give me an example, and perhaps there are, but for the most part, these that I've, st- like a statement, it, you, he said, I mean, that's not negotiable. I mean, the statement is a statement and that's how we would, so yeah. So I would say there is a gray area when you're looking at state versus description. The state of being versus description because yeah, you could, you, there's massive debate with state of being, so fair enough. So for the most part though, they're, they're clear and non-negotiable. We, we could add desire because there is, there is this category of desire. I want, you know, in Tagalog, gusto ko, right? It's, it's a very unique kind of, of verb. It's unique. Um, it's, uh, and actually you have different forms for different levels of contingency. There's a specific way to say, I hope, I hope something will, you know, like even just as a chance versus guaranteed. So there, there's a lot of more, there's a lot more specific forms in, in Greek that are not in uh, English or Tagalog. I think Tagalog is also, y- your infinitive can also be your command, can also be your past tense, right? And like um, um verbs, kumain uh, can be a command, it can be past tense. It just depends on the, it depends on the context, right? You could say, um, so, so that would be, that would be like what you're saying. It's, it's more debated, but in Greek, in Greek, it's not, it's not like that. There's a lot more pre- precision in Greek. All right, it's eight. It's six fifty-six. Let's take a ten-minute break. When we come back, before we go to the rest of these categories, I wanted you to, to kind of see where we're going. We're going to go to step by what I'm going to show you how to double-check to, to find the verbs, to find the nouns, or the the, the, the different the, the different uh, types of to help you in identifying this. Okay, so let's take a ten-minute break. 
Okay, so let's move on now. So we're, we're going to take a pause. We're going to take a pause on the verbs. And I want to go now to Step Bible so that you can see the power. You can see the connection of uh, if you were struggling with identifying, if, if you were uh, struggling with identifying the, the type of word, whether it's a verb, whether it's, it's, it's the actor, there is a double, there is a check for you. Okay. So what you would want to do is open up step Bible. I already have it prepped here, but what you'd want to do is you'd want to select. I'll just, I'll just show you what you want to select. So you'd want to type in, you'd want to uh, come down here. Everyone can see. Uh, I'm going to pick a Bible or a commentary. And then you want to select ESV, number one. And then you also want to select – if you can see here, I've already selected this SBLG. So you're going to double check with the Greek even though you don't know the Greek, okay? so. You have to select the two. You should have ESV and you should also have SBLG, okay? And then you would come down here to the OK, and then you just click OK here. And then you would just select the passage like we've always done. And so looking at here now, you can see that you have the, the Greek and the Hebrew, uh, the Greek and the English side by side, okay? Now, you don't know Greek, it's not a problem. As I click across here, you, you can see how it's matching. Does everyone see that? It's matching the word, okay? So, so you don't have to know Greek, okay? You, you're just looking for that word, and then you would click on it, okay? Now, it, now remember how we would say you could click on, I'm going to click on gospel. I click on gospel. And it gives you vocabulary over here, vocab, meaning, et cetera, blah, 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 LSD, dictionary, blah, 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 okay? It gives you that information, okay? The problem, though, is that it does not give you here the part of speech because you're looking at the English, even though you're looking at the, the Greek word, it's through the English, okay? It's not giving you the part of speech. So if you want to know the part of speech, so let's come back here. Gospel. What kind of word is gospel? You click on the English, it's not going to give you the part of speech or that, that verb or noun or adjective. It's not going to do that. What you need to do is you need to click on the Greek word. That's why we brought the Greek text. So gospel, I'm going to click on that, that Greek word. I click on it right here. And then when I come over here, boom, there it is, noun, right there, right for your, right for your eyes to see. So coming back here. If I want to say, I want to pick out the action word in verse number 17. Oh, I see. I think that's the action word, but I'm not 100% sure. What is reveal? I'm not sure what it is. Let me click on the Greek. So I click on the Greek. Let it load. And then I come over here. Ah, I have so much information. It's a verb. It's present tense. And then it, it describes some other things that if you were to be more advanced, you could, you could uh, investigate. But the, but, but the big point of the, of the matter is it gives you the verb. You see it's a verb and you see that it's the tense, okay? And then it gives you some other information as well. Um, but again, because this is not a grammar class, you don't have to know those other things. This is just a double check for you, okay? Is, does everyone see? Let me just take a moment here. To, does anyone want to see that again? Is it making sense? Danny, go ahead. I think, I think I cannot I cannot find SBLC. Uh, SBLG. Okay. In my... yeah. let, let, let's let's go back there. Great question. Let's go back there one more time and let's let's look at it. Okay, so I'm gonna come back here. So I'm gonna go pick a Bible. Okay, I'm gonna pick a Bible. So I click on pick a Bible. Now look, Danny, look, look at the screen. Over here you have Right now, what's toggled on your right is not ancient or all. It's English. So this list here is only giving you English translations. 
That's not helpful if you're looking for Greek. So you can go to all, or you can go to ancient. And it's under ancient. Okay. Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay. okay. The other thing, the other thing, Kulia, you can also do is this. You can always start to type it in here. So watch. If I already know the initial SBLG, watch, watch everyone can watch here. SBL. There it is right there. You see it? Top okay. left. So you can also just type it. If you, if you know the initials, you can also type it in the, as well. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I hope you're practicing with Step Bible. I, I really just want to say, if you're ever, your plan should be until you're good at Step Bible, don't go to, don't use, always use this. Just force, force yourself to practice. Force yourself to use this. Okay. Let me just quickly check here to make sure everyone's tracking with me. I don't see any questions. Team? Uh, yeah, go ahead. For the Old Testament, that will be... Okay, so let me try the Old Testament here. Let me see here. I think it's going to be... Let's, let's come Hebrew back. Old, uh, Hebrew Old... Hebrew Old... Alevo. Which among them is... Uh, will you recommend? The five of them. Yeah, so let me just let me just check here. I actually <laughs> I haven't yet researched. Let me let me try this OHB. Let's try the OHB first. I'm pretty sure this is the one because this is following BHS. So let's just include this as well. And then do okay. So let's X out of here. Let's just do Genesis. Okay, so let's see what happens when I click on Earth. So I wonder if, let me do some research. I don't know if the Old Testament gives you the verb and the noun form. I, let me do some research on that. Um, I, I done the, the Greek, I hadn't done yet the, the Old Testament. There's probably one. Let's, let's do one more quick check here, really quick, one quick check here. Let me see. Let me try. Yeah, maybe this one. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Yeah, the, the, the OHB, like I said, was the correct one, but it's not going to give you those forms. Now, I mean, now I will say this. I will say this. If you look over here, if you look over here, logically, you can figure this out, uh, Kuya Henry. If, you, if I click on heaven, and I look to the right, it just says heaven. That's a noun, it's not a verb, okay? If I click on the verb, I'm clicking on the verb here, to create, that's a verbal action. If you have it in the affinitive form to create, then you know that's going to be a verb, okay? So maybe you wanna make that note, okay? If you're clicking on a word and it has the to create, to run, to hide. So let's, let's look at another example here. Let's look at Genesis 2. Let's do Genesis 3. Uh, I'll find um, Genesis 4. So here we have, uh, um, so, and the, the, so that this, is, this word here is, and the Lord saw. So this word here is saw. So coming over here, see, to see, to see. Do you see that? To see. So uh, you click on here, it gives you to see. This is uh, Elohim, looking here, this is Elohim right here, Elohim. So if I click on that, it's just God. So we see that it's a, a noun, okay? Let's do one more here. Uh, here. So this is va, va yomer, va yomer. 
This is, and he said, Vayomer, and he said. So I click on that to say, so it's a verb. Uh, all right. So it's not as, and I, there's probably, they're in process of, of, of updating. It's just uh, Tinder House is still in the process, okay? Okay, so moving along here, let's, let's continue on here. Okay, so actor, actor. So now we, we, we did the verb, now we're doing an actor, okay? Now actor, actor can be uh, in several different places. So in this situation here, we're going to be describing, I'll give you the definition that we'll work through here. And so the actor is going to have be hiding in several different places. So you need to be aware, just don't identify the subject. The subject might not be the actor. The subject could be, in fact, the object. In English, this is the case. In Greek, this is the case as well. So it's very important that you're aware of this. Okay, so let's look at this. Definition. The actor is the person, being, or thing that carries out the action. In non-action state of descriptive sentences, use subject. So where there is not an action or an action type verb, you, don't, you can't use actor because by definition, an actor is acting. So you would change that word to a subject. Okay, Does everyone, is everyone tracking with me? In a non-action state of descriptions, descriptive sentences, that should be descript, descriptive, I think, use subject because you're inaccurate. You, you're, you're an actor by definition is the one acting, okay? And what we're going to do is we're gonna use the color blue and we're gonna do a single underline. So you've seen that before in class. Blue, it's going to be blue and it's going to be a single underline. So in my categories, I use the color blue and I'm just using a single underline. So that's why I do. And then you can just write above it, actor. Just like that. Okay, so that's that's it. Okay, so you're just looking for that now. What I, now? What we're doing now with location here is we're looking where can the where can the actor hide? Where can he hide? Number one, actors can be found in the subject. So Exodus fourteen thirty, the Lord saved Israel. The Lord is the actor. It's in the subject. Very easy, easy. Okay. Sometimes, though, the actor is not in the subject, but actually in a prepositional phrase. You don't have to know what a prepositional phrase is. You just have to understand logically where is the actor. So look at this phrase, 2 Corinthians 1.4. We ourselves are comforted by God. We ourselves are comforted by God. Logically, Logically, let's, so let's think through this. I, I just want to work through this so we can think through it for a second, okay? So this is the way I would do it. It's kind of hard, okay? So just imagine it's not there, it's not present. I know that this, I know that this is the action word. So I'm going to put here, this is the action, right? I know that. Now I have two options. I have two options. I can go with, the actor being here or here. So we could go to grammar and clearly identify, but again, we're doing this without grammar. We're doing this logically, okay? So you can ask the question, are we comforting ourselves? Yes or no? Obviously not. We're not the ones that's com comforting. Someone else is comforting us. Who is the one comforting us? God, it's, it's clear that this, this here is the actor. In actuality, this is the, we ourselves are in fact the object here. And you can, you just ask the question, who is the one doing the comforting? It's not us, it's God. Therefore, God is the actor. Everyone tracking with me there? Ask a question. Let me take a moment. I don't want it to be confusing. Everyone sees that? So in one sense, you kind of have to throw out your, your, your thinking of always identifying the subject. I've done this. I've even done this in class before. I automatically just identify the, the subject as the actor, and in, in, at times it's not the case, okay? And as, a, as, a, as an exegete, as an interpreter, as a pastor, so fundamental. 
Think about how, how great a truth this is that God is the one who comforts us. So you can even reword this to help, to help under, your, your, your congregation understand. You might even want to rewrite this. God comforts us. This is literally saying the same thing. We are comforted. We ourselves are comforted by God. God comforts us. <laughs> so, so simple, so profound. So simple, but so profound. And that could be in your, that could even be the way you, 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 you create your outline, okay? You're just changing a passive sentence into an active sentence if you're using grammar terms, okay? Implied actor. This is a little tricky and this is so fundamental, okay? The actor is not always stated explicitly because something else is being highlighted. The actor is still implied by the context. The speaker or author might have excluded the actor because he's accenting maybe the action, maybe the object. This does not mean that he's not present. So every action has to have an actor. So look at Romans 1.5. Through who we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name. Through whom we have received grace and apostleship. So let's just, let's, let's, I'm going to just break this down to, to show you that the actor is in fact God. So I always, I, when I do this, I always identify the action word first. This is the action. Have received is the action. Okay, so who is the actor? The next question is who is the actor? The actor cannot be we, Hindi Poiti. It's not possible, right? Because the we is the receiving. We're re receiving, right? So in, in actuality, the we is an object. Okay? Now, if you're going to get technical, gra grammatically speaking, we don't have to do this, but this, is the, this could be an indirect object. In Greek, you would just, there, there's, really two, there's really two objects here. We, we received, and then what do we receive? What do we receive is the question. Grace and apostleship. So this is actually a second object. Is everyone tracking with me there? No, we did not use any grammar. We, we're thinking logically. We're thinking with our noggins, okay? We're thinking with our noggins. We received, so we're, we're receiving. We are the recipients. We are the object. And we're receiving grace and apostleship, okay? Now, you might be tempted to say it's Jesus, but it's not Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is, Jesus is the through whom. And later tonight, we're going to see that through whom, this is agency. Jesus is the agent by which we received grace and apostleship. Okay, all right. And then, and then lastly, we have here, if, if Jesus is the agent, we are the object, we, we as in Paul, uh, Paul and probably maybe Timothy, someone Maybe not Timothy. I, I, don't, I actually don't know who the other we is. Um, I think that might be debated. <laughs> it's interesting. We, we have received apostles. He, he could be referring to all the apostles. He could be referring to all the apostles or, or um, yeah, I, that, I actually have to think about that. I don't want to speak presumptuously. I just realized that. We could at least say the we is, is Paul. Perhaps he's speaking uh, in the epistolary we or let me think about that. I don't want to. I don't want to speak out of turn. At least it's not. It's not us. We don't. We haven't received the apostleship, so we don't want to say that. So then, clearly, logically, who must be the actor? Someone give it to me. Who must be the actor? Jesus has already mentioned. Paul has already mentioned. It's we. 
for the we no so the question is who is the actor who is the actor who is the one doing who is the one giving who is the one giving the apostleship to to paul god 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 okay god excellent yes yes so we could rewrite this god gives to us grace and apostleship to bring about through Christ. Does everyone see that there? Does that, does that make sense? Everyone's tracking with me? So this is something that's going to be hard. It's going to take practice. You're going to make mistakes. I make mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes. But this is a fundamental truth. At the end of the day, Paul's apostleship does not even originate, does not even originate in Jesus Christ. Think about that. Fundamentally, Paul's apostleship originates in God himself. Okay, so here. So although, so in Romans 1, Paul does not explicitly say uh, that his apostleship is from God the Father. He just says that he is Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle. Now, when we look, when we compare called to be an apostle to Romans 8, we clearly see the calling is the, is, is the effectual calling from God the Father in eternity's past. So it, the, the calling is from God, okay? The Father, if you're looking within the Trinity, okay? You can say, oh, it's debated, blah, 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 blah. That's not clear enough. But if I go to, if I go to Ephesians, if I go to Ephesians, Chapter 1, verse 1, it's unequivocal. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. <laughs> so the source, the source of his apostleship is the will of God the Father. It's not Christ Jesus, okay? Galatians 1 says, Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through men, but through Christ Jesus and God. And actually, it's like a syllogism. Not through men, not from men, the source of men, not through men, but through Christ from God. You see that it, 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 it's, 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 it's a, it's a four part movement, not from man, not through man, but through Christ from God. Okay. So you have two examples here where his apostleship, his source of apostleship is from God himself. Okay. Again, I'm going really deep here. The big takeaway, though, is that we need to be identifying for the readers, for, the, for our listeners, where, where in some cases where the implied actor is, he's, he's there. Now, it's not being accented. The accent is on the receiving, the grace, the apostleship. The accent is on through Jesus Christ. That's the accent, but that's a truth nonetheless. It's a truth nonetheless. All right, next we have here is the object. The object. So we have verb, actor, now we have object. The object by definition is the person or being or thing. So it's, it's anything that can do an action. Uh, uh, maybe not so much a thing, but if you're thinking of a thing in the sense of an animal, person, being, or thing that receives action uh, directly or indirectly. I guess it could be a thing, like you could, you could break the bottle. If I break the bottle, the action is done upon the bottle. It's a thing. It's not even a being. It's just an object. Um, it's directly or indirectly. The action is done on another entity. So in this, in the category is different here. It's orange and it's a dashed underline. So here's some examples. So here's where you can find the object. Okay. You can find it in the direct object. Lord, save me. Very simple. Me is the object. Me is the object. Okay. Lord, this is actually an entreaty. It's a request for the Lord to save. I think this is a quote. This is from Peter, I think. I think it's Peter. Maybe it's someone else. Peter? I don't know. Maybe not. 
it's someone in Matthew 14, 30. I can't, I can't remember who it is. Um, but Lord, save me. Uh, we can also find the, 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 the object in, in a prepositional phrase or in the direct object location. So uh, he would have given to you living water. Okay, so the, the to you, the object is in a prepositional phrase. If, you, if we're really technical here, this is also an object. Object one, uh, you, and then there, he's receiving the living water. So there's really two objects there, okay? I'm just really highlighting for the sake of this time. I'm just highlighting this one, okay? Number three, the object can just be the content of knowing. It can be the content of something. So this is a different form of an object. This is, uh, I think this is, is this James? This is James 1.3. This is Henry's passage. <laughs> Sonny's passage, too. For you know. What is it that you know? What's the content of knowing that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness? So here is this, all of this is the content of the knowing. Everyone see that? There's a lot of times where this is so fundamental. There's a lot of times where this is so fundamental. Uh, the, 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 the object can also be in the subject. For by him, all things were created. For by him, all things were created. So looking at this is the verb. And this is actually an action. Noticing here. This is the agent, and this is Christ. <laughs> Who's the actor? Who's the actor? God. Yes, Chaos, she's, you're, you're on top of it. Great work. The actor is God. And this fits perfectly in the, Bi the Bible's big story, right? Because in studying Genesis 1, God is the one who acts, correct? And what we see here is that in realizing that Christ is in the created, uh, creation event, he is the means by which all things were created. He is the word by which all things are created. He is the means, the agent, okay? But I want, what I want us to highlight here is this idea that this, in fact, is, if you're looking grammatically, this is the subject. This is the subject. But I don't want you to identify it as the subject. You're, I, you're looking at it logically. Where is the object? The object is here. Pastor, I would like to add something. Um, would it be easier if, for example, uh, because what I was doing was, uh, for example, for this, for by him, all things were created. So I am answering the question, what? What were created? So it's like all things. Yeah. And who created? that Scott. So... <clears throat> Would it be easier that the object answers the question, what? Excellent. No, that, excellent. No, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so, so let's do, let's do a, 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 a fundamental question of what. Yes, let's, you can add that. No, that's a, that is great. That's great. Yes, uh, what or who? Because Lord save me. So it's like Lord save who? <clears throat> so that would be. Me, is yeah. it correct? Yes. Yeah. So you can ask that question: What or or or, or who? A excellent. And and this is coming back to now. You're seeing the connection between our questions and our answers. Our questions and structure analysis. This is why this is why we have to be very good at asking the right questions. And now we're getting the right answers. So if you look here, I I hope that you're seeing the process of. And I really appreciate Kay. I really appreciate you bringing this into to the foreground, that this, this whole process, we're both asking, making observations, and then we're researching, we're, we're, we're getting at those answers. So excellent connection, Kaya, thank you so much. That's good, that's really good.
Okay, let's go on now. So this is actually advanced. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to require this. And I, I left it blank. I really left it blank. When you have two objects, and especially in Greek, or and you can see this, you will have an object and then maybe there's something that the object has to do. So for example, in Romans 10, 9, if you confess Jesus, as Lord. So the object is confessing Jesus, and then what are you confessing about him? Lord. So there's two objects here. So there's different ways that, um, uh, that we can look at objects. So there's actually compliments. So you can say, God created us to do good works. There's actually two objects there. God created us, us is object one, to do good works is actually this action <laughs> this action object. So that's really a more advanced looking at objects. I'm not expecting you to, to know that. I'm not, that's beyond this class. That, that would be an advanced, this, that's hermeneutics too. <laughs> Henry, hermeneutics too. <laughs> so, so but, but the importance is that there's many passages where we have to make those connections for our audience. God created us, uh, for what? To do good works. And, and there's a lot of places where us making the connection, we are created, we are the object, we are not the creator, and then we have a purpose or we have a, an action to do. We need to be sharing those truths with our, with our, our members, our, our, our children, our, our fellow uh, partners and, and whatever you're doing. So uh, hermeneutics too though. <laughs> advanced hermeneutics. Um, but I, I left the categories here, so at least you understand what, I, what I'm referring to. And if you want to try, go ahead and try. If you think that there's, if there's two objects or there's a connection between two objects, absolutely. You know, I don't want you to not try, but I, I left it blank. I don't want you to be stressed. And for some of you, maybe it's just too much. And so I'm not in any way expecting this from, from you at this level, but it's something for you to contemplate. It's something for you to contemplate. Uh, is, is Sonny here or did Sonny, Sonny step out? Sonny, are, are you here? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, yes, sir. So i just, so this would be like, uh, like d double accusative, if you're familiar with the double accusative. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, so this is like double accusative, yeah. Okay, next, describing, so actually, this is where my, my, my handout is not perfect. In, in the big picture, I have modifying verbs, but here I changed it to describing verbs. So I like the word describing as better than modifying. It's, it's easier to understand. I think it, maybe it's, it's better. So uh, second edition, it'll be changed from modify to, to uh, describe. So let's just look here. Definition. These are words, phrases, clauses that modify or qualify verbs or action words. So these are words, phrases, clauses that modify or qualify verbs or action words. So there are a lot of words, a lot of phrases that qualify verbs, action words, a lot. Okay. Now I, I have given you, I have given you actual grammatical categories here, but I'm not, you don't have to know these because again, we're operating from logic, not from grammatical categories. But if you, if you are familiar with grammar, these could be prepositional phrases. So in Tagalog, you know, I, you could say sabahai. Sabahai is actually a prepositional phrase in Tagalog. Um, Salaob, um, those are prepositional phrases. English would be in the house, that's a prepositional phrase. And there's a ton of prepositional phrases. That's just beyond the scope of this, of this class. So you have prepositional phrases, you have adverbs. Adverbs can be like uh, just basic qualifying. Angrily, fast, he ran fast. Fast is an adverb, okay? So there's a lot of, it's, it's just qualifying that verb. You, you can see it, just once you see it, you'll, you'll understand. Um, participles, infinitives, and dependent clauses. But really, you can't, there's just so many different possibilities. It's really when you get in the text that you will see them, okay? Yeah. And, 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 and the grammatical, big grammatical category would be adver an adverb, 
uh, adverb or adverbial uh, adverbial phrase, adverbial clause like that. But again, beyond beyond the scope. So then here, let's look at specific types. So these are specific types of of descriptions of verbs. Okay. You can say they're types or relationships. Advantage or disadvantage. Advantage or disadvantage. So the two are really are really uh, parallel here. So this is just, if you notice here, you're gonna put into parentheses. I've always tried to do that, put it in parentheses, and then you, you do a square, or you put a box around the connecting word itself, because the connecting word, you're gonna see, that's the word by which, um, actually I have a typo here. <laughs> this is a typo. <laughs> this is wrong, I'm sorry, Pesetia, this is, so this is wrong. I, I can't believe, I'm so embarrassed. This is wrong here. It should be, it should be here. And this is the box. So I'm so embarrassed. Oh my goodness. I'll have to make, I will make a new edit and, 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 send, and send out a new one. Just correct it. It should be on behalf of, on behalf of, okay? Um, this relationship describes for whom or against whom the action is directed at. So this is giving a clarification where, uh, so you could say in one sense, oh, this is, this is an object. And in one sense, it's, a, it's an object, but it, yeah, it's not, it's not as much an object because it's just describing advantage or disadvantage. So there are specific categories here. So I would not describe it as object, okay? And so the keywords are of, on behalf of, or against. And so the example here is, Romans 5, 7, on behalf of a good person, someone might even be brave enough to die. Okay, so the, the, the verbal idea here is, it's kind of complicated. Uh, it, it's, it's like, it's, it's, yeah, it's more complicated. Um, but that's the verbal idea. And then the actor is, is here. And then this, this is qualifying that for whose benefit, whose advantage, whose advantage does someone die? A good person, right? It's a good person. So what we're saying here is that this prepositional phrase is qualifying uh, someone would die for someone else. Who, do, who does someone die? Well, someone would die for a good person, right? Most people won't die for a bad person, right? But who is the advantage here? It's the one who is a good person. Is, that, is everyone tracking with me? This relationship. Go ahead. The next example is agency. We've had examples of this, but I'll just go through it again. An agent is an intermediate person by which, uh, uh, an, an intermediate person which is used by an actor to accomplish a specific action you could refer to this as an agent. So for example, um, <laughs> I'll, use that. I'll just use an example here because, because uh, you know, um, it's a category in the Philippines. I'm not making a comment on anything else. Some people would say it's good. Some people would disagree. I, my point is not to, to agree or disagree. It's just to use an example. So, so, for, so for example, we, you could say that, that Duterte is, is, uh, is at war with drug dealers, right? Duterte is at war with drug dealers. Duterte himself is not the one literally arresting and fighting with the drug dealers, Duba. It's the, the PNP. It's, I mean, it's the law. <laughs> the law is the one that's arresting the, the drug dealers. But the specific agent by which he carries out the war is the PNP. Okay, so, so in, in, in this sense, you would not say though that the PNP is the actors in the ultimate sense because they are not the ones determining, they are not the ones, they are just following the command of the, the actor who is Duterte, okay? Is everyone tracking with me there? So, so this is really important for, king, for kingship, for lordship context because 
at the end of the day, it's God is the one that ordains, that acts, that creates, that saves, that delivers, that judges. But the agent by which he does this is Christ, is his Holy Spirit, is his angels, is his apostles. <laughs> right? So their the agency is massive. We are the agents of God. We are the agents of God by which he brings the gospel and saves everyone, those who would believe, right? We are his agents proclaiming the gospel by which he saves. Uh, God, what, uh, Jesus Christ is the agent of God in saving us. He is the one who actually dies on the cross. So agency is very important, okay? All things were made through him. So Christ is the agent, but he is not the actor. He is the agent, but not the actor in the ultimate sense. Association. So this is another category for qualifying the verb. It's just qualifying the action. Whoever presses you to into service for one mile, go with him too. So it's a company, association. Uh, this describes the relationship of accompaniment. Go with your sister to clean your room, right? So it's, it's, it's an accompaniment category. Cause, cause, cause. This relationship provides the reason for a particular verb or verbal action. He gave authority to him to render judgment because he is the son of God. Because he is the son of God. Now notice here that when you identify this keyword, you're going to identify the entire, this is a clause here. So logically, can everyone see how everything's connected? It's one idea. Okay, so this is qualifying this action here. Everyone's tracking with that? Any questions or comments? So I hope at this point, because actually if you see here, you actually have a verb, you have a verb inside of it. Right? You could say this is a state. Same question. Yeah. Ray, you're muted. Sorry. You're muted. That's for theological clarification and thing. The one you mentioned earlier regarding all create all things were created through him. So who is the creator then? Is it Christ or God? God the Father. The, the agent by which all things are created is Christ, Jesus, but the actual actor is God the Father. In similar fashion, Tim, like you are, we are saved through Christ, so God still is the one that's saving us. Exactly. Exactly. 1,000%. You hit the nail on the head, Kapitan, and that's... <laughs> Salvation is... From the Lord, the Father. He is, the, he is uh, all through the Old Testament. He is the Savior apart from whom there is no other. But the, the agent by which he saves is Christ. So fundamental. And you hit it on the, you, you hit the nail on the head, commented. You hit the nail on the head. Amen. But, but what, so how, how does Christ play there as being the Savior for us? In just design for for purposes of discussion and thing. I know. Well, no, because you can also you can also view again unique within the Trinity. With with so so. <coughs> Ephesians one. Ephesians one. People will talk at the. They will refer to it as okay, debated. Fair enough, but the pactum salutis, the the agreement of salvation or the covenant of salvation. In the Pactum Salutis, you have God ordaining, Christ redeeming, the Holy Spirit sealing. So, so you can speak of God, of, of who saves? <laughs> oh, the, the Trinity saves. They have different functions within our salvation. We can speak of, um, of each one of them saving us. But... The important thing is in the Old Testament, it's very clear that, 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 that in one sense, it's the Father who is the Savior. 
And, and so we can speak in both categories and we're both accurate. Okay, yeah, so it's, okay, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna finish briefly uh, this, the, 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 the describing, describing uh, verbs. And then for the last two categories, I'll just have you look all those categories on your own because I wanna practice. I wanna practice this in Romans 1, 16, 17. So after we go through here, the rest of the categories, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask that you read the rest and discuss the rest. And if you have a question, please post it on, on the Facebook group page. Okay, so let me just finish here. And then, and then the rest you'll have to read for, for describing nouns and then also for connecting words. Okay, so the next category after cause is comparison. And so it's just clear here, a comparison is, is an analogy. So be kind one to another, forgiving each other just as Christ in, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. And uh, so, you're, so there's, a, there's the command to be kind and to forgive. And the reason or, or the comparison is uh, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. Uh, the next category is condition. And so this is uh, the condition has to be met in order for the main verb to, to, to take effect. So this is a, this is a condition. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. It's a condition. We have to be confessing our sins, present tense. So there is a movement in the church to where we're already saved in Christ. We're already, we're already, uh, perfect in Christ. We don't need to continue to repent and confess our sin. And so this would directly contradict that theology. It would directly co contradict that theology. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So we are, we are still commanded to forgive us, to, 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 to have repentance and confession. And Martin Luther said that the, the Christian life is a life of repentance and faith. And I really, if you don't agree with that, <laughs> Let me know. We, we will have, I will find someone, we, we, you know, uh, that is a foundational, uh, that is the foundational truth that we need to, 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 to grab. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is, will you do concessive and then we'll be done? I'll just read the different options. But um, con concessive is a little bit hard to think about, but it's actually very important. So concessive means that the, the, the dependent idea seems to be contradictory to the main verb, but in actuality, it, it, it's, it's true. Both are true. So the example here is Hebrews 5, 8. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. And so it seems to be a paradox. Why does he need to learn obedience if he's already the son? The son knows how to obey. Well, in reality, he needs to learn obedience, just like all sons learn obedience. So it seems to be a paradox. In reality, it's not. So many times, that's why I said it's always an apparent paradox. And in reality, it's, it's clarifying a misconception. It's clarifying something that maybe we don't have categories for and saying, even though this might, this, this is true and this is true is what it's essentially saying. Okay. So it's a concessive idea. It's a concessive idea. The other examples are location. You can have manner. Manner is different than means. Uh, let's look at the comparison between means and manner. Manner is the often the emotion or style by which an action is carried out. So let your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving. So that's a manner, right? Some people say it's also a means. Fair enough. It's debated, but it's more... Uh, you'll see this, you have manner and means side by side. So the means by which we are to, to let, if you come down here, the means is prayer and supplications. The manner is with thanksgiving, right? So you don't pray grumbling, you don't pray angrily, you, you pray with thanksgiving, you, you, you pray with gratitude. And then the, spe the, the specific way by which we let our requests be made known to God is through prayer and supplication. So, Actually, this is a typo. I'm sorry. This is so embarrassing. This should be M N S. I definitely have to give you a second edition here. So 
this was a typo here. It should not be MNR. Sorry, I'm very sorry about that. So, so Tim, how is this distinguished from um, agent? So an agent should. Okay, great, great question. The difference between means and agent. Agent is a person, means is impersonal. So, okay. Uh, means would be, or think of, think of way or instrument. Agent, so an agent can use, so, 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 so Jesus is both an agent and also he can use the means of prayer. So he, he uses the means of prayer to speak to his father. So agent is always a person or some type of entity, an angel. And means is, that's something recent that just came to, came to my like realization. Um, some people want to want to use, some people will want to use the category instrument. That's fine. If you were to write down instrument versus means, if it's, if, if you want to further clarify, um, now here I would not use instrument. Instrument would be like, uh, he killed the man with an ax. <laughs> so with an ax, instrument, it, it, instrument would be like an object. So, so prayer and supplication, these are really means. You can't, you can't use an instrument for that, okay? But an instrument could be like anything physical, any, any object, okay? Opposition is just who's opposed to the action. So the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel against the Lord, against his anointed. So where is the action in opposition to? We can have purpose. Purpose is self, is self uh, explanatory. Uh, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the with the mouth one confesses for salvation, for the purpose of salvation. So you can actually you can actually further clarify when you're teaching. You can rewrite this as in order in order to. Now it wouldn't make sense here, but um, you could say for. The purpose of salvation. So that's further clarifying this word for. Okay, you're really clarifying it so it's crystal clear for the audience. For the, uh, so these, these are the key words here. Every, every category should have keywords that you should be able to be able to identify. Uh, next we have is reference. So reference is with, uh, uh, with reference to what? So it it's, uh, describes the relationship with the main verb. So you could say with respect, with respect to, with reference to, for. Oftentimes the word is for, but you can further clarify. For we know that all things, uh, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. Now there is a range. You could maybe want to say, maybe it's a purpose for the purpose of good. It could be uh, with respect to good. So it, 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 there is a gray area there. I'm thinking about there now. Maybe you want to say purpose. That's possible with reference to good. All things work together for the result. I think what you're seeing here, and I'm actually doing this in semi on purpose, sometimes there can be three options or two options. It's not black and white because there's overlap. We're using categories to describe. So, so, I don't want you to be stressed by that. We're just trying to further explain what's what's going on here. So you could have one of these three is, is, is possible. I have to think about that. <laughs> maybe, maybe I would choose purpose. God is working all things together for our good, for the purpose of good. That could be with reference to good. Yeah. Does everyone see how there's kind of a gray area here? It's, I hope no one's being stressed. I, I don't see people being stressed here. Yeah, sometimes it's a gray area. And actually, you'll have grammarians say the difference between result and purpose, there, this, is like, this is like a continuum here. Mm 
maybe if it's translated in different uh, phrase in different way thing like and we know that all things work together for good for those who love that that, that would probably in reference yeah with reference to good no and, and i think that might be why i chose reference so i chose these categories so that it, yeah it could be it could be i i yeah it could be with reference to good <laughs> But there's a gray area there, but it's fine because again, we're further clarifying what is not crystal clear and maybe your audience has no clue, okay? What we wanna say though is that the big takeaway here is that God is working all things together, whether it's with reference to or for, our, for the purpose of good. All things, God is using all things. This is both, this is both good, and bad for our good. God is using everything for our good. And so that there should be huge peace. There should be huge assurance in that statement. And so sometimes we're fighting against those bad things that happen to us and we're complaining and we're bickering and we're angry. And it's like, how can he do this to us? No, he's using it for our good. Who's guilty? I will raise my hand. I am guilty. I am guilty. I am guilty. I am condemned. Because that's so hard to identify if it's during the time it's really good for you or not, right? Yeah. What we can say is, do not harden your hearts as they did in Merimah. <laughs> so there's the command. Do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. That's the response. Anyway, we have to go. We have to go. Okay. The rest of the examples, let's, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Spatial is a little hard. Think of space. It's movement. Spatial is different than location. Spatial is, 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 is moving into a place. Okay, into, into. All right, to, toward. All right, let's, let's end here. Your, part of your assignment for next week will be to read the rest of the categories. Let's go into an example. Let's go to an example here. All right, so in structure analysis. So this is, in structure analysis, we're going to have a whole method to this all right so right now we're just looking at the categories so we'll look at, at, at structure analysis later but when you're working through your passage what i want to say right off the bat i will prepare like a step-by-step -step for you is the way i break this down is at the most fundamental level and breaking this down you want to identify capital letters and also punctuation. So really looking at the big picture, you have really sentence one, sentence two. So just looking at the big structure, I'm just giving you a quick snippet. If I'm preaching this, I'm thinking that you're going to have because you have two sentences, you're going to have structurally, the exegetical outline is probably going to be two major points. This, once we have the structure analysis, this is going to move towards exegetical. If you look at your list, then theological, and then your homiletical. So you're, so structurally, if I'm preaching this, I would not have three points. I would have two major points because structurally we have two independent sentences, okay? Now looking here, we have a comma and a comma. So that's why I broke out, that's why you have four sections, okay? Because you have a comma here and uh, here, and here um, if you look here, this is actually indented. This is indented. And you could actually indent this further. You could, you could actually bring it down and indent. So right now we're block diagramming. And at the farthest part, these are main ideas. And then you have um, dependent ideas. 
we're going to discuss this later. Okay. I'm just, because we're still doing intra sentence. We're not doing inter. I'm just explaining how I have diagrammed it for you. We'll come back to this. Okay. So just looking at the big idea here that you have two main ideas. And then you have these dependent. We'll come back to this. Okay. But looking at block diagramming, uh, far left, far left is main ideas. And then dependent is, if you can think about this, it's almost like subordinate. This is subordinate to the above. Okay. But again, we're not looking at that tonight. We're just doing intra. So we're looking, we're right now focusing inside into the sentence itself. Okay. So I have my, I have my categories here. Let's start identifying. Let's start in about, I'm just going to work through here and you can, you can ask a question if you want. You, you can uh, um, just watch and follow along. Now this again, because I'm looking at, I'm looking at, I'm looking at, uh, I'm not looking grammatically, but I'm looking at the, I'm looking at this logically. When I look here, I'm looking for all the words. I'm looking at first all the words that describe the action itself. I'm looking at all the words that describe the action itself. When I look here, there's really, this is the action here. Okay. Now you could actually say this is a state. I am not ashamed. So actually, I would actually probably go with a state more. He's in the state of, now this is a negative. This is a, so let's just cross this out because there's no action. Um, there's actually, this is, a, this is a negative, correct? I am not ashamed. So we could say positively, I am confident. Or bold. Is everyone tracking with me there? I'm just trying, I'm just trying to further clarify what's going on. But the big takeaway is that I've identified, I've identified the action word. Okay. So what I'm going to go through here is um, I'll, looking at this first sentence, I've identified this is the main action word. Okay. I'm going to erase this here. The next thing I'm going to identify is the, the actors. So I see here, and that's clearly uh, uh, probably a subject because it's not an action. So I'm going to write subject here. Now, of the gospel, grammatically is not an object, right? Grammatically, it's not an object. But when we're looking at what is he, so, so, uh, what is he not ashamed of? The gospel, right? So I, I don't want to, now, maybe logically you're going to say that this could be an object. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I, I would not, I would not put, I would not put object there. I have to think about that more. It's, it's not black and, again, it's not black and white. It's a gray area. I would, I look at my categories and I say, um, uh, there's a relationship with Paul to this and this, right? There's a relationship, or we could say this is a relationship to this. So actually, when I looked at my categories, this is me. Maybe you want to do different. I identify this as a reference, a reference. What is he not as what is he not ashamed of with, with reference to what is, is Paul confident in the gospel? Is everyone tracking with the reason why I chose that? Now, the next thing we have here is we have this, this, this word for, okay. Now, if you go to your categories, I'm looking at my categories in here. I, I go down here. I go to connecting words. I'm looking at connecting words here. And uh, I see that in this idea of the explanatory section, 
the keyword is for. So I'm actually going to highlight this and I'm going to put explanatory because it's at the beginning of the sentence. Remember, remember a connecting word is connecting, it's connecting with the previous sentence. So this could not be dependent. It's going back up to the previous sentence. So when I look at connecting words, I'm going to look in the keyword section and I see the keyword for is within is within explanatory. So if I let me just let me just come back here really quick. So if I go to here, now I know this, but I'm just going to show you, for example, I come down here. This is where you're going to have to become familiar. I come down to connecting words and I come down to explanatory. If I come down to explanatory, I see the word. For. And so that's one of my keys. Okay, this is an explanatory relationship with the previous context. Okay. This definition, this connecting word introduces clauses that explains the previous sentence. And looking at the broader context, it's very clear that 116, 1, 116 explains. One, one fifteen. Diba, I am eager to preach the gospel to the barbarian and the Greek, also to your Rome, also to you in Rome. Why? Why would you be eager to preach the barbarian? For I am not ashamed. So he's going to explain why he's not. He's going to explain why he's eager to preach the gospel. Okay. This also. This also gives us a context as to why we often think of this is a negative. This is a negative, but really Paul is eager to preach the gospel. It's not like we have to preach the gospel in spite of the fear, in spite of the shame. The, 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 the gospel is actually what brings Paul the confidence. Does everyone see that? He's actually confident. It's it's the gospel that's bringing confidence. Not, it's not, this is, this is the, the, the analogy I'm trying to get at is if I'm playing basketball, um, Kuya Bobo, do you play basketball? A long time ago. Okay. So do, do you mind if I use you in this illustration? If I say, I am not ashamed to play basketball. I'm not ashamed to be on Boboy's team in basketball in today's context. Is that the same thing as I am not ashamed to be on Michael Jordan's basketball team? <laughs> Do you see the difference? The one is like, I'm not ashamed even though Koya Boboy is on my team because he doesn't play anymore, right? He's not, he's not bringing me, even, perhaps he's not good. Okay, so. So perhaps when I say I'm not ashamed to be on Bull Boy's basketball team, it's like in spite of Bull Boy, he doesn't play. So it's, it's, like, it's like something that in spite of him, I am confident. That's different than saying I am not ashamed to play on Michael Jordan's basketball team, right? Michael Jordan is actually bringing me confidence, right? And so what I'm trying to get at is that here, it's not that I am – in spite of the gospel, I'm not ashamed. It's because of the gospel, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> See that? <laughs> Think about that. Okay, so let's go on to the next sentence here. So we have, we, we've just broken out that first clause, okay? Next, next. Four, four. So we have this other connecting word here. Let's, let's, uh, let's think about this. Actually, because this is, this is only for uh, sentence relationships, I would first be tempted to use it as well here, but I can't because the green is only for inter-sentence, okay? So we can't go, we can't use, we can't use the, the green. We have to look at the uh, we have to look at the um, the describing verb section. So this is going to be used in purple.
because this is dependent upon this. Is everyone tracking with me? Green is only between independent sentences. So green is only going to be in relationship to here and then in relationship to, in relationship to, to here, okay? So actually we could just go ahead and also this is explanatory. We actually see that Paul does it several times. So it's, so, this is also explaining, is also explaining, okay? Everyone's tracking me? Everyone's tracking with me? It's not as difficult as it sounds. It's gonna take practice. It's gonna take practice, it's gonna take time. So here, this has to be dependent. So if I'm looking at here independent, I can look at the categories. When I look at the categories, you can look at all the categories, look at all the keywords. I see that within one of the keywords, uh, this could be, this could be uh, a cause. So we could use the word because. Again, logically. Why is he not, we're, ask, we're answering the question, why? Why is Paul not ashamed? Because. So again, some of it is grammatical, some of it is the word itself, and then some of it is logical. What fits? It can't be purpose, it can't be, it can't be inference. That doesn't make any sense. Why, am I, why is Paul not ashamed? Because it is the power of God for salvation. So then we have here, is, we have the, the subject it, and then we have this description. For it is, so this is a description here. You can look at the categories later. So that looking at the relationships here, I, I identify this as a link. This verb is just linking the gospel to the description. And it's being linked to here. This fits, this fits logically and also grammatically. Does anyone have a question? I don't, I don't, if you, there's no shame. If you have a question, if you're not understanding why I chose what I did, I, I can do it again for you. Okay, I'm not, I'm gonna go on. I, I haven't seen anything, okay. So coming along here, um, I actually notice, I actually notice um, uh, uh, this word, uh, this word, this is a phrase here, just logically, it's a phrase for salvation, okay? And so we, we, go to, we, go to the, we go to the handout, we look through all the different options, and then I determine that it must be purpose. For the gospel is the power of God for salvation, for the purpose of salvation. Okay, that makes logical sense. And it, it, it's also grammatically possible within the word for, okay? Um, now, what is it concerning with reference to who? So again, we have a reference. It's not object because there's no action. It's not object because there's no action. So looking at here, we have to everyone. So again, there's different options, but logically, reference. Who is the, who is the salvation for? It's for everyone, with reference for everyone. For it is the power of, of salvation to everyone, but then there's a qualification. If I go, let's go back to the handout. Let's go back to the handout. I go, I go to the handout here. I see that word who. I'm thinking, ah, oh, who? I've, thought, I've seen that word before who. I've seen that word before who. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to go to Describing per, 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 uh, places, things. Describing persons, places, things, concepts. I look down here. 
Ah, keyword. Keyword, look at this. Who? Who? Ah, it must be. So, coming back here, this must be a phrase, and the phrase is here. This is describing everyone. So in one sense, this is a description, or you could say a limitation. Salvation is for everyone who's believing, okay? Then when I come here to the- Can it also be, Tim, can it also be a condition, the who believe? Is it also a condition? So, so, so logically and in reality, it is a condition, okay? But we don't, but because of the word who, I would more want to say it's a, it's a description because that's the category. Now, logically, in, when you look at the big picture, you could say limitation and also there is a condition here. But within the forms, we have the word who, and so it should be a description. So, so, so look here, and this is where, this is where, uh, there's overlap here, okay? Both are true. So the gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, okay? So that's, we're saying it's a description. Look at, it's, it's a parallel passage. Look at first, first Corinthians 15 verses one to four. Now I will remind you brothers of the gospel, which I preached to you, similar context preached to you, which you received in which you stand by which you are being saved. If you hold fast. <laughs> so there's the condition. If you hold fast is another way of saying belief. So that's why I'm saying it's semantics at a certain level. So, the big takeaway, Koyo Boy Boy, is if you preach this homiletically, you should talk about it being a condition. That's correct. But at this point, so that we're accurate, it's a description because who believes grammatically it is a description. And so our, our categories follow that. But many times, descriptions are also conditions. In, in the Gospel of John, in the Epistles of John's, descriptions are also conditions so there's overlap here yeah but looking along here so we have to everyone ah there's a description who believes or we could also say limitation or as I mentioned condition that's true okay what about here logically what is going on here what is going on here to the Jew first and also to the Greek now I'm going to go back to my handout. It's describing a noun, not a verb, so it has to be in the blue. It can't in light blue. It can't be in the purple because purple is dealing with a verb. It's not describing a verb. It's describing this everyone. Okay. We first know that it's those who believe, and then what is this other description? So it can't be description because there's no who. Uh, it, it renaming of, but there's no who. Uh, clarification. Logically, the, the, look at the definition. The relationship provides amplification to the previous statement. Is this further amplifying or clarifying who can believe? Yes. Yes. If it's logically yes, it's possible. So who can believe? This is a clarification. So let's think about this. Whereas here, this is in one sense, you're, you're narrowing down the people, right? So you're narrowing down, you're limiting, as Kuyabobai said, the description is specifically who believes. Here, in a sense, you're also, you're opening up. 
anyone who believes, not just the Jews who believe, the Greeks who believe, right? So Paul is really, he is really clarifying and specifying the gospel, it's the power of God for what? Salvation. Whose salvation? Everyone's salvation. What? They have to believe. Oh, just just Jewish believers? No. Do you see it? Do you see how it's just so precise and yet so uh, comprehensive? <laughs> Let's take a moment to think about that for a second. Any questions or thoughts? Is everyone tracking what we're doing here? Everyone's make, making sense? Okay, what we're going to do is let's uh, – it's already 8.53. Do you want to continue or is this um, – I can finish this next week. I, I want to be respectful of time. It's already 8.54. Let, let's, let's, let's wrap up here. I'll finish this next week because I don't want to go over. I want to be respectful of, of people's time. Um, let, can, can you try to start there's – there's another assignment due next week. I will not make this due next week, maybe in two weeks. But I want you to start this. I want you to start that. I want you to start this for your for your for your passage. Okay. So for your passage that you're preparing your sermon with, I want you to, to, to start this. Okay. I think you'll be excited to start this. I think this will be good for you. So it's not. Don't be looking at relationships before or after. Right now you're looking inside the sentence. You're looking inside the sentence. So you're just looking at verb, uh, actor, object. Describing the action, describing the nouns or the, the subject or describing the nouns and then connecting words. Okay. So let's, let's, uh, any questions or comments before we close in prayer? I'll post the assignment description on our Facebook so that you can start working on it. I've already posted assignment number six was due this week. Assignment seven is due next week, I believe. And so this will be assignment number eight, and it will be due the following week. So uh, start handing in your assignments. If, if this month I'm going to start taking off, not a lot, but you're gonna, I'm going to start taking off points if, 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 if you're late, okay? Um, 